Hello and welcome to 11th lecture of course on corrosion, environmental degradation and surface engineering. Topic of this lecture is synergistically combined degradation mechanisms. In other words, is something like a surface degradation mechanism due to combination of more than one failure action. The first question comes why we are thinking about a synergy between two failure mechanisms. Is there really a synergy? As far as my knowledge is concerned, there is a lot of synergy between the, this kind of failure mechanisms and overall degradation rate and damage progression is strongly impacted by interaction of surface degradation mechanism such as a mechanical action, chemical action and heat or radiation action. Mechanical activities such as rubbing or abrasion disrupt physical barrier which is a kind of uh, layer protection leaving material vulnerable to chemicals. Corrosion is more likely to occur on newly exposed metal surface. Mechanical actions particularly uh, fast rubbing or sliding can produce a lot of frictional heat which can lead to the thermal degradation of the surface. Increased temperature can hazen thermal degradation process like thermal cracking which has a deterioration of the surfaces. Elevated temperature can facilitate chemical reaction, speed up diffusion of the reactive uh, species, accelerate the chemical reactions and encourage a more powerful or forceful chemical breakdown of material. Ionizing or we say ionizing radiation can start or catalyze chemical processes in materials, reactive species that can further deteriorate the material through chemical reactions can arise as a result of radiation induced reactions. So, there is a very intermingled kind of uh, synergy one cause causes another cause, another cause causes a third action, fourth action something like that and there is a need to figure out which is the fundamental reason behind that because what we really require, we require root cause failure so that appropriate treatment can be given to the surfaces. So, for that purpose uh, we can think about the synergy uh, among degradation mechanism and this is a what uh, we have shown the three bubbles there is a mechanical action one ellipse then chemical action another ellipse and heat and or radiation actions. Now, there is a possibility that all three can work together also there is a what we call a synergetic action between uh, these mechanisms. For that purpose we need to analyze what are the material properties and what are the operating parameters. Operating parameter as we already studied something like a temperature it is ambient temperature high temperature or maybe the sometime because of the radiation temperature also increases. There may be mechanical loading, tensile loading, fatigue loading that is an important environment may be a dusty environment, may be the cloudy environment, water contents. Quite possible radiation intensity also plays a major role if the radiation intensity is uh, almost negligible we may discard that, but many times the radiation intensity is significant and we need to count it and all of uh, the, the more than all it is a more important what is a contact condition is there is a some sort of a stationary uh, static condition or uh, moving condition and moving again it is a rolling a condition or sliding condition. Now, coming to the material property what is the composition many times we uh, change a composition we ally and it may increase a strength, but deteriorate uh, from a fracture point of view. What is the microstructure we have already studied something on a microstructure microstructure changes significantly and one of the major another feature comes along with microstructure is a surface roughness. Another point comes to mechanical properties it can be strength, it can be the strain, it can be uh, toughness or um, uh, we can say one of the surface properties something like a hardness. Thermal properties play another important role. So, these properties and operating parameters when we work uh, club together then we can come up with a some sort of synergy what will be the degradation mechanism. So, that is why we are saying a thorough understanding, thorough understanding of operating circumstances material properties and last what say what is our design requirement what we, we uh, what we want to do want to operate something on a high temperature or a high radiation and high speed condition and high load condition naturally design will change according to that 
what is our design intent. So, that is our important. So, they say that it is a operating circumstances, material properties and design requirements and understanding of this is important to get optimal performance and optimal lifespan. So, these are important for uh, us if I express in other words something I can say to prevent surface degradation it is critical to review material composition, microstructure, mechanical and thermal properties. Material composition that are designed to withstand mechanical wear may not be able to handle chemical attacks as we have already exposed and we experienced this in a previous uh, uh, lecture. Say surface uh, de uh, deterioration is influenced by particle size, grain boundaries and phase distribution. Finer grain material may be more re, uh, resistant to mechanical wear, but too many grain boundaries may cause corrosion or rupture. This is what we have mentioned last time is the IGC will be playing more important role. Many material which become a very hard, which become a very wear resistant, but may fail because of rupture on uh, it becomes a site, it provides a site to the corrosion also. So, we can say high hardness is desired to prevent plastic deformation and abrasive wear, but it may increase the likelihood of erosion and brittle fracture. We studied also something like erosion and we say angle of attack depends uh, and then it will affect the material property quite possible if there is a hard material and the uh, angle of attack is a 90 degree, we require more and more energy absorption and then hard material will not be able to show and there will be a failure because and then we can say the brit uh, brittle fracture. Often high hardness is required to avoid the surface degradation, however uh, higher hardness obtained through alloying or heat transfer uh, heat uh, treatment and this is what we have already studied that more and more alloy more and more possibilities of uh, grain boundaries and that may give some sort of weak uh, point for the corrosion uh, for, the, for the fracture also. So, that is we can say that uh, it may trigger numerous crack that lead to the corrosion fracture to effectively handle shock and impact loads, high toughness is essential, but high toughness will not come without sacrificing the hardness. So, we need to play a kind of a hardness or toughness and which is going to give the best result to us, which combination is going to give the best results, we need to understand that. To dissipate heat efficiently and eliminate a localized hot spot uh, that could cause a wear, corrosion or fracture, the material must have a good thermal conductivity. So, it is important whichever material you record a very good thermal conductivity, but sometimes we record thermal insulation also. So, we need to really understand the situation what is our intent. The thermal expansion of the contacting material like when we are going for the coating or some sort of uh, and then the laying the layer on the surface. We need to think about what will be the thermal expansion and where if there is a uh, difference in thermal expansion naturally we need to change a material, otherwise we need to do a some intermediate uh, some sort of procedure on that. So, this is very important. Another thing is that sometimes we apply corrosion or so the compressive uh, force to uh, bind to two surfaces, but it will lead to the tension and may cause a another kind of a fracture or another kind of a loading, which we need to really uh, uh, account properly. So, what we are saying that overall uh, thermal insulation is also important, thermal conductivity is, is important, thermal expansions are also important. So, we need to uh, think in totality. When we need to think in totality, naturally we require all degradation mechanism and think over whether one mechanism is going to impact other or not. So, that is why we want to uh, propose a some sort of framework, we say the framework uh, is been shown here to uh, think about a combined effect. Now, in uh, this framework as uh, we already uh, mentioned in previous slide, we required a mechanical strength to be accounted. Sometime uh, it is a, this is not a material property surface hardness, but we can use a, uh, along with in this properties itself you say it is a surface property hardness is not a mechanical property, but we need to account it. Fatigue resistance is important. Now, coming to the chemical in when the solubility, wettability all those are important for us to be accounted. Thermal uh, we say the conductivity is important, expansion is important and on top of that the melting because the melting wear happens which is what we call as a severe wear and then uh, slightly lesser melting uh, the operating temperature is slightly lesser than melting uh, temperature 
in one of our slides say that there is a 0.3 to 0.7 times our melting temperature then a creep also will play major role. So, we need to think from that angle if a higher and higher temperature or, or a melting temperature most of the degradation phenomena will be eliminated in those cases. Now, coming to the contact in a situation or contact condition we say we required a micro cyclic uh, loading uh, and uh, the motion also that uh, happens in the phreatic uh, corrosion is almost uh, on a 1 micron to 2 micron kind of am uh, amplitude it is a, it's a, it's a, uh, almost negligible invisible motion, but still we need to count it. It can be a cyclic loading, it can be sliding, it can be rolling we need to account all those. So, in the, in the framework we need to account all those. Now, coming to the loading as I say that uh, static however, I know uh, in reality there is nothing called a static loading, every loading is a dynamic loading because there will be one way or another with some variation. So, impact will be there and that will be always a dynamic loading. And however, there is a significant dynamic loading or cyclic loading or impact loading. This is another important thing impact loading the reason being uh, uh, when we think about erosion impact plays major major role. Uh, particles are going to get impacted on the surface uh, particle may be a solid particle or fluid particles it is going they are going to play major role. Now, this another one what we have been mentioning about the service environmental condition humidity which is one of the very uh, you will say that uh, corrosive media for most of the materials under pressure quite possible crack expand or maybe open up temperature and under temperature again there will be some sort of expansion again we find that it, the service uh, maybe the failure will enhance in uh, other high temperature. When we think about acidic condition pH value lesser than 7 sometime it is a 4 5 which is uh, happening in the most of the liquid cases then it is also uh, important to account it. Another one if there are contaminants, contaminants may be a many many even the gas uh, when the gases are also there may be SO2 uh, uh, also there are maybe some sort of nitric oxide is also there. So, that will play important role uh, overall even something if nothing is there carbon dioxide itself plays important role as a contaminant. Now, oxygen uh, is sometimes very useful sometimes very harmful. So, we need to account those things. Now, if I combine all to, uh, together we can say this is a going to go hard with a some sort of a failure mechanism as uh, this will turn out to be a complete one course failure mechanism and as synergistic in this. So, we will be covering only few example in this case we say let us combine mechanical uh, with uh, chemical. So, mechanical and uh, chemical will give you the wear corrosion itself. Now, wear corrosion again can be a number of divisions in this it can be abrasive, it can be uh, phreatic wear, it can be phreatic uh, corrosion and uh, there may be a number of other possibilities also. Now, combining uh, mechanical with the heat you can say the mechanical stress and thermal we have already uh, known uh, that the creep failure is there thermal phreatic will be also there. So, there may be a number of phenomena related to this combining heat and chemical that may be we have already know the oxidation and ionization and uh, the, the hydrogen embrittlement is one of the major uh, uh, failure which happens most of the times in a marine situation and hydrogen get ingress and we will consider one of the case study uh, on a hydrogen embrittlement. Now, if I combine all three together this comes like a stress corrosion cracking. Uh, we know the stress is a mechanical uh, because of the tensile loading corrosion is a chemical and then uh, there is a possibility of the cracking which is happening because of the temperature because of the radiation it can combine together and then we can uh, say that these are the uh, playing important role. So, we will cover a couple of example to exemplify or to provide a complete understanding about this uh, um, we say the topic and it will be very important if I want to really say uh, in other words we can say a complete framework for synergetic failure of uh, degradation can be developed by taking the interaction between material qualities or uh, contact uh, circumstances and service condition into the consideration. Surface roughness variable uh, as uh, we have already mentioned uh, most of time we can design surface. So, surface roughness variable which impact wear and contact mechanics plays important role and it becomes a very essential and we will uh, deal it uh, in a more depth and greater depth when we cover the topic on surface engineering. Surface uh, ambience uh, like you know pollutants, uh, gas, corrosive substances, pressure, vibration, your vibration also accounts because it is going to impart some sort of a dynamic loading one way another way and maybe the radiation uh, intensity 
like you know UV is a very common and most of the time uh, and then the materials are exposed to the sun and then actually deterioration or decoloration will be there it will impact overall ferrule analysis also so must be considered combining many failure action can have a synergistic effect where the presence of one failure action amplifies the effect of others and has in the degradation now it will be interesting like um, um, uh, when we say the combined effect and how they really act uh, together. So, we will consider one of the case and uh, I can uh, provide some sort of uh, um, you know, the, some mathematics formula also uh, elementary level to provide uh, understanding. Another one we say that uh, the big cracks uh, which is caused by the mechanical stress may, may provide some sort of uh, site for the corrosion. We can know very well that pitting corrosion becomes a very big issue and then uh, um, and if there is a crack already available and the crack which has happened because of the mechanical stresses and radiation uh, induced or enhanced wear stress assistant corrosion and thermal uh, um, and the corrosion are important uh, to consider as a result of interaction between the several uh, failure mechanism degradation process uh, one action may accelerate the degradation process of another and that is what we want to understand. So, let us start with the verse first but we are talking about something like a corrosive wear uh, and sometime people can say corrosion wear, we are using the word corrosive wear. In this case what has been shown in this case yeah, particularly uh, I have shown uh, some sort of uh, two figures, figure 1 in this case uh, you can see there is a some sort of relative motion, there is a corrosive media and there is a some sort of oxide and there is a metal and metal can be something like a iron or maybe steel or maybe which has a uh, activity. Now, this oxide firm is generally a passive firm, a protection firm, corrosion media can be like in this case we are considering something like um, 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 the sulfuric acid that is why we are using the word as a sulfuric acid which uh, is a very very harmful um, acid in the, as such. But interestingly whenever you use a strong uh, maybe say the higher percentage of sulfuric acid it does not cause a much corrosion. Weak uh, sulfuric acid cause more corrosion. It is interesting to know that to understand what is really happening. So, we say strong uh, sulfuric acid unable to dissociate into anionic radical and uh, hydronium ions. So, if it is not able to dissociate it will not really act. However, if we think about a weak acid which has a water content in presence of water it will make an ion. So, that is important to understand weak sometime acid is really harming more compared to a strong acid which people feel that oh that is not a strong acid only will harm more compared to the weak. So, this is what one of the example indicates that way and what is really happening in this case we are saying because of the sliding motion because of the mechanical motion it is a causing a some sort of a distortion in oxide film some sort of a rupture of uh, oxide film. If there is a rupture of oxide film naturally a uh, bottom surface which is uh, without coating this this surface will be exposed and if it gets exposed naturally oxides uh, may be because of the acid is available it will immediately react on the surface it will make a some sort of oxide layer again. Again in mechanical action it will remove self uh, the corrosion media will form. So, removal and formation, removal and formation will be a continuous process and finally, metal uh, this complete metal will turn out to be 0, no use or maybe say we need to throw this metal because it has reached to the critical level where it uh, will not uh, survive the, um, the, the uh, it will not be able to provide the strength. Right. So, this is uh, what uh, has been shown in, uh, in the first figure. Now, we are coming to the figure 2 which says that in this case we are using the word wear assisted corrosion. So, corrosion is assisting wear or uh, wear is assisting, assisting corrosion depends on the what kind of really mechanism is happening. So, what we say in this case uh, we are comparing with a passive. So, this is uh, what we have shown in earlier diagram is something like a passive layer. In this case wear is not happening at all only the corrosion that is why this, this layer is uh, uh, the, we, we are able to see this uh, the passive layer or maybe say passive cup which is a corrosion unaffected by uh, fear. Now, if corrosion gets affected by fear what will happen there will be fragments layer is formed and again is got ruptured. So, we are showing in time span there is a layer and got ruptured again layer will be formed uh, up to level again it will be ruptured 
again it will be formed again it will be ruptured. Now, here we need to say the building upon this. So, material was already there uh, maybe uh, already here now I have to bring this material over here then next time I have to again uh, the in this material on top of this. So, this is a cumulative effect which we are trying to see and this gives a depth of wear. Actually, the wear, of the wear depth as increases material thickness is going to reduce and, and after some critical thickness it will not be useful at all. So, we need to change the material. So, what we say here the wear assisted corrosion compared to passive or oxidized surface uh, is the same thing passive or oxidized surface. New surface exposed by the wear are much more reactive and susceptible to the corrosion and that is what has been shown with uh, this red color uh, uh, cover here they can build and then this is the wear depth is continuously increasing. So, if I say this is cycle 1, this is cycle 2, cycle 3, in cycle 3 itself it has uh, where it has gone almost oh, the overall material which has been lost is almost 3 times. So, it is a significantly high. Now, we can think about uh, three mechanism what we say there is a abrasion wear mechanism is abrasive wear or maybe say um, 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 this wear is a erosion wear or it can be a phreatic wear and corrosion is a common. So, there is a co combination which already we have studied abrasive wear, we have uh, studied erosion wear, we have studied a fretting wear, we can connect with a corrosion. If I want to elaborate it, how do I elaborate? You say the in sliding wear the passive oxide films are mechanically removed or destroyed. Exposing fresh metal surface, these exposed surface corrode more quickly in corrosive environment because they lack protective coating because the exposed surface is a much more reactive compared to the um, protected coating. So, or maybe protective surface. Now, wear caused by the abrasion enhance the corrosion rate. Abrasive wear exposes a new metal surface eliminate the oxide layer through asperity or uh, hard particle. So, it can be a 2 D 2 body abrasion or 3 body abrasion and make such surface susceptible to the corrosion attack. The corrosive environment speeds up corrosion at the one points. Now, coming to the mechanical erosion, we say mechanical erosion which is caused by the impact of the fluid flow or solid particle remove passive layer or protective coating from a surface exposing the newly formed metal surface to the corrosive media. So, it is exactly same abrasion and, um, and then the erosion major thing is mechanical action is removing the protective layer, corrosion is the same again uh, abrasion will remove and erosion will remove. So, more or less same mechanisms are there which we have already studied. Now, coming to the phreatic, we say phreatic develops when the two surface vibrate with a small amplitude in the response for the applied force. So, it is a almost negligible amplitude, but again and again that layer also the phreatic uh, sliding wear or maybe some motion is removing the particle uh, layer as such. Even though because of the, the, the more force uh, on the periphery, the particles are not getting removed. So, if what will happen in the situation? It is removing the protective layer and then is allowing uh, oxygen or maybe the corrosive media to interact with the fresh surface, make another coating, and then the particle which has been removed or where abrasion has been removed, it can act as a abrasion also. So, phreatic leading leading to corrosive wear and leading to abrasive wear. So, here the three mechanism work together, and finally, we know that. Uh, once we open uh, that kind of connection or join, we find a lot of wear debris coming out of that material is almost eaten away and then that is a very harmful as such. So, this is uh, what uh, we wanted to uh, uh, convey. Now, let us uh, take one of the case study uh, which uh, we have picked up from a zoo ETL uh, and, uh, um, and we say the paper which was uh, to published in uh, 2020 or what is the meaning here? We say we want to you know, investigate erosion corrosion of steel. Now, this uh, erosion corrosion of the steel we are going to use a similar kind of diagram um, which we uh, studied in a previous uh, lecture, uh, what we were thinking about the three electrodes setup. Uh, we were talking about the crevice uh, uh, corrosion that time three electrodes can be made and then uh, in that setup slightly different uh, sample was there, here the sample will be different, but principles are more or less same. That also there also we use a counter electrode, we use uh, this uh, sample as a one of the electrode, but we use a word like working electrode and we use also the reference electrode. So, that is the major uh, main, uh, main thing is a three electrode setup. 
and then here we are trying to use uh, erosion flow assist uh, accelerated corrosion and then uh, in this setup what uh, the corrosion will be studied separately then few uh, the way particles are added and again uh, then the flow is increased so that particle attack the sample so the erosion corrosion together so erosion corrosion together corrosion together uh, separately these two experiments can be conducted on this kind of setup and that has been shown over here and how they do they make uh, this kind of uh, uh, counter and then make uh, something like a 100 uh, what we say that electrodes and then they measure it. So, this is a 100 electro wire uh, beam electrode they have used and then each cell whatever it can be uh, and, uh, analyzed separately and that has been shown each cell has been uh, uh, and then uh, analyzed separately in this case. So, the overall three condition in first condition they have uh, rotated uh, uh, this uh, sample at the 1000 rpm and then it was only the sodium chloride solution 0.5 and, uh, and the, the concentration as such. In this case uh, they have increased the speed to from 1000 to 2000 while in this case a uh, third one where the erosion also is uh, going to accommodate. So, first two are the only corrosion related and third one is uh, erosion plus corrosion where the uh, propeller was rotated at the 2000 rpm and each cell they are trying to figure out what is the wear rate as such. So, wear rate can be decided based on two how much uh, the current has increased that will give corrosive wear while uh, in thinking about uh, how much material has been lost from a surface that can give a mechanical wear. So, these studies can be uh, clubbed together that is why we are writing a study uh, studying erosion and flow accelerated corrosion requires uh, this uh, setup and we are using a spinning uh, cylinder that is a test specimen as a working electrode and then uh, we can adjust the rotational speed that has been shown 1000 rpm and 2000 rpm over here. They perform this exper uh, experiment for the 20 hours and then uh, they, they calculate the values and this is a 3D profilometer. This is a 3D profilometer uh, the, they use uh, for the this kind of uh, uh, micrograph or uh, profilograph. Now, here major thing is coming total wear I can give a T as T. Now, wear due to abrasion I can uh, represent that as a W A. Now, we say the wear due to the corrosion can be expressed in a W C. However, this is a synergetic effect when the both the mechanism are working together that is why we are using the word synergetic effect. So, total wear and there is abrasion wear and uh, corrosion wear and uh, synergetic wear and then we see how much what is the really the effectiveness of the synergy that ratio can be given as a W s divided by T. If it turn out to be very high like is a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 naturally synergy is there that means one mechanism is leading the, the maybe accelerating the failure of other mechanism or second uh, is accelerating the failure of first mechanism. So, this is a uh, uh, enhancing the effect and causing a more and more failure. So, this is a uh, can be done uh, through the experiment by performing this kind of work. Uh, work. However, if you want to really uh, think in slightly different manner we can say the method which has been described in previous slide intend to investigate the interaction between the localized erosion and localized corrosion. Dynamic fluctuation of anodic and cathodic sites can be captured by monitoring the potential and galvanic current situation distributions and that is what we when the we can find out the wear rate. The localized metal loss brought by uh, corrosion can be determined by uh, examining the anodic uh, current which is be changing and uh, um, individually electrode also because they made 100 electrodes using the distributed uh, potential meter on galvanic current and additionally by calculating the wear loss using the 3D profile meter data which we have seen here and then the previous uh, uh, and then maybe say the diagram 3 diagrams we can there, there is a 3D profilometer um, a scan image is given and we can calculate also or we can find out the dimension and there are established formulas we can find out how much material has been removed. We have a something like a you know, formula which say that T is equal which is total wear as a wear due to the abrasive material, wear due to the uh, corrosion and wear due to the synergetic effect. As a result a matter loss brought by the localized corrosion erosion may be measured and their synergic effect also can be uh, evaluated. Now, uh, let us see the what are the surfaces uh, which uh, was provided by this reference. 
we say examining the surface morphology of the steel which was exposed to the erosion corrosion or er erosive corrosion. So, and uh, question comes also that uh, my question this is the first diagram which has been uh, the 50 micron this micrograph. Now, if I with the zoom we uh, this location we are able to see some sort of a micro forging. Micro forging comes when the particles are getting embedded into the, the surface and then uh, sometime also getting removed also. So, in getting embedded removing so naturally it is going to really uh, you know, the dam damaging matrix as such it will really give a very different kind of surface roughness or maybe increase surface roughness bigger than the much more compared to what we have designed and given to that. So, that has been shown if I again zoom 3 times either the 10 micron and now this is a 3 micron we are able to see that there is a some sort of dissolution and there is a some sort of uh, gaps are available. So, in the earlier we study something like a crevice uh, corrosion can take place or pitting corrosion can take place in this kind of surface and here we are able to see the big pit which is also 3 micron if the, this particle is removed there is a pitting right. So, uh, it started erosion and then particle get embedded into surface again get removed also from a surface leave some sort of side leave some sort of pits naturally it is going to enhance together or uh, the failure mechanism and that is why we say the why erosion uh, enhance erosion and the corrosion enhance uh, erosion happens reason being the surface roughness increases drastically. As I mentioned in this case if we use a sand particle, sand particle getting embedded on surface and another uh, case it is getting removed again embedding uh, again removal naturally is going to uh, uh, change a matrix or maybe say that surface itself decrease a lot of surface roughness. And because of this action also there is a uh, removal of the protective layer it can be work uh, hardening layer it can be oxide layer depends uh, what it was there earlier. And another one is that uh, as I mentioned the quick removal of the sand that have, uh, has been embedded into surface embedding uh, itself uh, under the force because of the mechanical force is uh, applied or normally on that and then uh, we are moving uh, tangentially also. So, the particle will get embedded and removed also that is what we are saying the quick removal of the sand particles and another one is that uh, encouragement of delamination. Uh, or the, the, the increasing the length of the subsurface uh, fissures or cracks all this mechanism happens together roughness happens removal of the protective layer happens sand particle getting into it and, I, and then the, then the getting into the part and the surface matrix and then getting removed and another possibility the delamination happens. So, so many phenomena are happening together if I want to express another word we can say erosion can destroy cementite network which is a phase that is a found in a steel. This makes easier for pitting and corrosion to happen. So, naturally if the network uh, of the steel itself is disturbed naturally it will cause uh, and there will be chances of more and more pitting and more and more corrosion happening there. Even in this situation uh, the another situation comes something like I choose a best material which is a resistant to corrosion a best material which is resistant to abrasion, but because there is a lot of synergy between the two mechanisms quite possible that best material which a why I was thinking the best material may not be turned out to be the best material maybe it comes in second number, third number, fourth number there may be some other material which are much better to handle this energy compared to the individual mechanism. So, we need to study those kind of things. Now, let us take uh, another example uh, what we say the mechanical and thermal action here coming together that is the temperature and mechanical and it causes a failure also. So, this is what we are trying to understand and here uh, the, 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 they use a method something like uh, uh, ASTM standard uh, which has been also mentioned in the ASM handbook. They uh, did a steel or silicon based steel or oh, sorry aluminum sorry in this case uh, there is a silicon and then they use uh, AC series uh, aluminum which is the best uh, available aluminum kind of a material uh, there, there is a complete series which has the best properties. And then uh, what they do, they do the treatment solution treatment, then they do cooling kind of the quenching and finally, they go with the aging. Aging is not here in the sense to increase the life and deteriorate the surface or something like that, but aging is to strengthen the aluminum alloy. That is why we say the aging to strengthen aluminum alloy by precipitating uh, small uh, silicon particles or particles are precipitated to increase the strength and then that is why we say that. Uh, uh, there is a mechanic uh, the, 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 there is some sort of a theoretical formulation which uh, author did 
and then this is uh, what we are writing here Akhtar uh, which was in uh, ETL their paper in 2018 which was published and then we have picked up that paper uh, for this as a uh, one of the example. We say in this case they, they studied and they uh, uh, hypothesized or they thought over that is strongest aluminum alloy uh, will be available if they do aging at the 120 degree to 210 degree centigrade. That means, if they do a kind of uh, uh, treatment or aging treatment uh, varying from a 170 degree to 210 degree, they will find a some sort of a best uh, aluminum alloy. So, again I am using the word aging does not mean to deteriorate the way we get old and our performance comes down while in this case aluminum is said now with aging and particularly in a temperature 170 to 210 degree it may give the best performance from a strength point of view not from corrosion point of view from a strength point of view that is what has been mentioned over here. And then uh, the, the, this uh, piece uh, whatever the treatment after that they try to uh, the, uh, do testing uh, using the ASTM standard that is the E8 particularly for the, uh, the tensile testing while uh, for uh, E23, 12 by the impact testing. So, they are doing a both when we do the aging kind of treatment uh, after that what will be the strength criteria as per the literature indicates is will give them best mechanical properties, but will it be a same for the impact properties, will it really give a similar kind of results that is what we need to figure out. Now, what has been shown here the grain boundaries have been shown and uh, this is the first one is the heat treatment. Uh, um, and the maybe say without any aging treatment. So, the grain boundaries has been shown and then in this case when the it is been treated to the 150 centigrade they are able to show some sort of a, a discontinuous semi discontinuous change and this has been shown red color red color red color. So, I am able to connect this one. So, they are able to show some sort of a chain or we say use the word uh, semi discontinuous chain. So, these are the chains uh, which are semi discontinuous they are not connected well connected with each other, but there is a uh, chains are available and that is uh, in the, the semi discontinuous chain. And then when it is uh, really when they are treating at the 175 degree we are finding uh, continuous chains and under this uh, we say the discontinuous uh, chains we are finding more or less circular or maybe the, they are making very good grains and then. Uh, it is gives a very good uh, uh, then the kind of a boundaries or grain boundaries and is a continuous change. They are not semi discontinuous they are continuously kind of a close to one they are more like elliptical one and then they are remaining there and then uh, it gives a good strength as such. When coming to the 200 degree and the edging at the 200 degree they find the fragmented chains. So, chains get fragmented it is not a close one they are open and then uh, there is a more chance of the failure. So, they what they did they try to figure out uh, what is a hardening phase how much is a hardening phase which they wanted aluminum to get hardened and get a little uh, higher strength. So, they found uh, in the first case in the A case where there was no treatment there is no edge treatment they found the 32 percent area as a harder stage. Uh, case 2 B where the edging was done at the 150 degree centigrade they found uh, this as a 35.5 percent. When the edging was done as a 175 degree they found the, uh, this uh, phase uh, hard edge stage phase around 38 percent. So, that is the best material uh, in this situation well coming to 200 they found this uh, is decreasing to the 25 percent which is even lesser than 32 percent. That means, if I uh, want to do aging at 200 degree is going to give the worst performance even the worse performance compared to the uh, without aging. So, we should not do aging at this. So, in, in this case overall they what they mentioned here the 175 degree is the best that is why we are saying the semi continuous chain of uh, eutectic uh, uh, sil and, uh, silica particle increase mechanical properties uniform and continuous eutectic uh, SIE chain provide the best mechanical properties that is a C. So, if I say this is a C uh, in this case and then uh, this semi discontinuity is a, this is a B figure. So, this is a 150, 170 and the, the D is been rejected because uh, uh, it is a losing the properties or is losing the surface and then the hardening phase or hardening stage in this situation. Now, uh, they did a some sort of uh, failure and then they analyzed those failures and that has been shown here figure 1 and figure 2 
they did a tensile testing as per the ASTM standard which was mentioned in the previous slide and then uh, they did impact testing also there was uh, th that has been shown uh, in uh, the, the, the following the ASTM standards. So, what they realize in this situation when we are talking about uh, with, uh, with aging at uh, uh, first is without aging that is A has been given B as a 100 uh, degree aging uh, C 125 D uh, 50 150 and E 175 and uh, F 200. So, what we have studied in previous slide and our uh, and because they mentioned uh, the E is going to give the best results naturally the E uh, is should give the best results as such whether it is an impact test or there is a tensile test it should give the best result in the both the cases uh, because of the mechanical properties will be the best in uh, and then there is a continuous uh, silicon uh, uh, and the precipitation which is giving continuous boundaries there. And what they uh, realize in this case that there is a some sort of uh, dimples uh, there is a ductile failure this is the ductile failure and then uh, there is also dimple here however, there is a some sort of a cleavage they are able to observe. Uh, as uh, the some sort of uh, in the heat trip because of the heating while uh, they find maximum uh, dimple uh, area in E phase as well as F phase also. So, fracture gives us some sort of uh, a more ductile failure uh, uh, in a uniform testing condition. So, it is not really uh, harming or is not showing a significant variation even if it is treated at the 200 degree centigrade. However, coming to the, in the impact test you can see here clearly the F is giving the worst uh, microstructure or maybe say that uh, micrograph as such because uh, in this case the uh, dimples are almost negligible and then they are more and more uh, ridges more and more uh, cleavages available in this case and that is uh, what we they mentioned that very clearly that impact uh, uh, whatever they thought temperature is going to give uh, results they find that uh, in, a, in the F case uh, particularly the figure 2 F and then the 2 F that this case is uh, the, the bad case and then we should go ahead with the other uh, treatment. So, this is uh, what has been mentioned in uh, the paper. Now, we will come up with uh, another example that is very interesting in this case that is a hydrogen embodiment and as I mentioned earlier that uh, this kind of thing happens in the marine cases and then most of the marine failure happen because of the hydrogen embrittlement, embrittlement this causes the hydrogen ingress into the metal causes the brittleness enhance the brittleness. Now, uh, hydrogen embrittlement again can be divided in two parts what we call as a blistering as a one part other one is a hydrogen embrittlement as it is complete mean. So, what is the difference between embrittlement and uh, blistering? We say bristling uh, basically happens on the surface and in uh, embrittlement happens within a surface or below the surface of surface. And so, naturally question comes uh, why uh, the, the, what is really causing hydrogen bristling or what is the causing the hydrogen embrittlement that is what we want to study in this case. What we say that uh, type of hydrogen uh, degradation that occurs when the hydrogen atom migrate from material that when from within a material they move to the surface and aggregate at the surface. So, that uh, from a hydrogen within a surface they move to the surface as such and they generate uh, some sort of pockets and that is what we use the word blisters is something like a bubble formation on the skin which happens also a number of times. Now, naturally what we are seeing hydrogen containing environment such as a aqueous solution which has a hydrogen high pressure hydrogen uh, gas which we will we'll be covering one of the example where the high pressure gas was exposed to the surface what happened after that. And now uh, maybe there is another uh, kind of uh, the, the liquid or maybe solid available hydrogen sulphide. So, this uh, hydrogen blistering will cause a some sort of surface cracking finally, it will lead to the pitting and then finally, it the whole layer may get also get removed from a surface or maybe many many pits are getting generated on surface and finally, we need to change the surface. So, it gives a some sort of nucleation uh, for the pit formation or maybe a something like a you know, raised surface and which can be ruptured which can be you know, the, uh, removed easily because of mechanical sliding and that will cause a failure. But again it will be only the surface failure it will not be within surface failure while a, a hydrogen embrittlement causes a within the surface and the whole uh, pit big uh, the pit formation will be much bigger compared to the uh, and the figure 1 which has been shown over here. So, in this case a penetration of hydrogen atoms in a material or aggregating in a lattice structure. So, we are emphasizing that 
hydrogen will get increased to the lattice structure and increases the brittleness and chances of fracture. Actually, that is the something like hydrogen get increased within that naturally and then the brittleness increases, it is going to create a some sort of crack and in the, if it happens in this side, the whole half portion is getting removed from a surface that is naturally a bigger failure as such. So, that is what we say increase, increasing the chances of fracture and this kind of uh, uh, hydrogen embrittlement happens most often in a steel even a titanium alloy which is very costly alloy many times we use alloy uh, this alloy, but it is also subjected to the hydrogen embrittlement. So, this is uh, susceptible to the form of deterioration. Now, many times we do electroplating again uh, in electroplating there is a possibility of a hydrogen embrittlement and we need to think about uh, in, in, uh, to avoid this kind of failure. Now, uh, let us uh, show uh, on the one sort of slide and which we say easily you are able to see these are the bristles is kind of a raised skin. Even uh, in the human skin also we have seen this kind of a raised portion and these are the bristles uh, which has been known uh, and then we say if the sliding happens uh, under uh, on the top of this what will happen these bubbles will collapse or uh, this bristle will get, get damaged and will find a kind of a shallow pits on the surface itself. While coming to the hydrogen embrittlement, you can see here um, in the, the kind of uh, shape which has been fractured from a surface, right? And then you are able to see many many crevices and maybe maybe the network of uh, cracks as such. So this causes a, a big failure uh, hydrogen embrittlement. Blitzer is an initiation, maybe gives some sort of uh, surface pits which leads to the uh, surface failure as such, or maybe the pitting it can enhance that gives a really um, the place for the corrosion and then uh, corrosion and, uh, can increase the pit size also. Now, uh, this is a pressurized hydrogen when it is a uh, the steel surface is really given a hydrogen at a high pressure what will happen to that. So, that is one of the experiment uh, was done uh, by one of author and I am trying to give a results. This is what we say uh, and then the surface without any hydrogen um, exposure this SC1 is a hydrogen exposure um, and the, the condition something like that. They did a experiment in autoclave at the for a almost 160 hours using the hydrogen gas and that to the high pressure that is a 120 uh, mega Pascal and temperature they kept around 200 degrees centigrade. So, this is a high pressure and maybe the, the, the moderate temperature condition while this was SC1. And then SC2, the what they did, they uh, wanted to do uh, go ahead with uh, an electron backscattering diffraction. So they wanted to do a polishing, and then uh, they did a polishing, and that uh, took almost 10 hours. That means this surface was exposed to the environment for 10 hours. They assume, they assume that quite possible uh, hydrogen, which was uh, encapsulated inside the surface, will escape but it did not happen. So, we do not find much variation between the B and C on E and F failures are more or less kind of similar while you can see in the case of original without any hydrogen exposure failures are more like a ductile failure this is a 100 micron and this is a 50 micron precipitation are there, but we find is more like a ductile failure and here you can see the many many crevices or maybe say there is a some sort of a discontinuity and then this is you can bigger the scale you can find uh, there is a number of uh, um, you know, chances of the if the corrosion media other corrosion media can come it will really the, 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 the cause a major damage. So, same thing in the E, uh, e and F same thing in the B and C. So, hydrogen does not come out easily as such it is a that is why remain in the surface cause a major failure. And that is what we say that blistering will not cause that much when the failure hydrogen embrittlement will cause a failure. Once a hydrogen embrittlement happens, it is really going to make a deep cracks and increase the cracks, it is increasing the brittle failure. And if it is a uh, additional some corrosive media comes into picture, then uh, maybe the uh, is available in that environment, it will cause more and more failure of that. So, that is what uh, has been mentioned here. Now, uh, then uh, to us. Uh, uh, end of this lecture, I will try to cover one uh, other uh, example which we again we have picked up from a zoo uh, ETL which was published in 2022. Now, here what uh, all three mechanisms are happening mechanical, heat or radiation and chemical also all three mechanisms together 
and what they did is study something like um, and, uh, and then the tidal zone which is as I said the marine zone uh, tidal zone happens it can be high tidal that is why they are using what is the STL medium uh, tidal uh, MTL low tidal uh, situation LTL. So, they have a three uh, cases and then say they have studied for three months uh, tidal zone exposure causing a corrosion hydrogen imprittlement or hydrogen permeation inside the surface and naturally the cracking also the under stress mechanical loading corrosion and hydrogen imprittlement they did and then uh, they consider this on uh, one of the steel surface as a AISI 4135. And then you know uh, in the, they are saying that uh, when they go had uh, kind of uh, and then the fracture in all the cases uh, high tidal uh, uh, case me, uh, medium tidal case and low tidal case in all the cases there was a corrosion product on the surface and if they remove they polish the surface then still they are finding the some sort of the pitting as such. And then we say that they found the pitting corrosion was found on all the uh, samples or all the coupons in tidal zone variation in a pit diameter happened naturally uh, when they go hard with a high tide uh, in the case they found a greater uh, dimension greater diameter of the, the, the pit uh, compared to the uh, medium and uh, low tide uh, case and then the diameter also they have mentioned something like uh, 190 micron uh, in case of the, the STL and uh, 106 micron in case of the MTL and 102. So, we can find that my MTL and LTL they are not significantly different, but high tidal is a very in the big difference as such. Now, uh, apart from uh, dimension or the uh, diameter they also try to figure out what will be the depth, what will be the depth of the pit. They found the depth of pit as in this case of STL is almost 200. 12 microns. So, the in compared to diameter the depth is more than uh, diameter as such. Uh, coming to the uh, in this uh, MTL they found around 147 um, and the micron and the it is also more uh, compared to the uh, diameter of the MTL and the last uh, um, case uh, again uh, in LTL also they found depth. So, in the, they found the pit uh, depth is always more than the diameter uh, which is happening So there is a narrow case. Uh, and then uh, it, it is the need what they say that uh, there is a some sort of mechanical action happening there is a pitting failure is also pitting corrosion is happening and then inside there was a hydrogen uh, uh, embedded that is uh, really happening because of that. Then uh, they, they also try to figure out uh, uh, on the failure mechanism as such and then uh, they you can see here that this is a uh, the cone and cup case. Uh, they found the a, uh, a, a1 and a3 and then they are able to show the shear lips uh, outside the uh, this core region and then they found there is some sort of the dimples uh, in a fracture it is not really uh, uh, what we say um, and the, the brittle failure it is the ductile failure completely while in case of the STL we do not find a core region and we do not find also cup uh, appropriately as such we find a number of cracks which is causing the failure and not only the primary cracks, but there are secondary cracks also in the deep and this is what we say there is a cleavage hydrogen embrittlement that they found the hydrogen also there. So, there is a hydrogen embrittlement coming to the MTL and LTL, uh, LTL is shows more or less same behavior compared to the without uh, exposure to the tide, uh, tidal domain. However, in some cases they also found some sort of a secondary cracks. And then, uh, and, then, uh, and then those are uh, also in uh, MTL. However, the failure is not significantly different than the normal case. Uh, well, however, in STL case, it is a very different. And then they mentioned very clearly that uh, in marine domain, um, and this hydrogen embrittlement will be there. And then uh, there is a failure which will be a brittle failure. And it will, uh, and then uh, we need to change the material. We need to think about material which can really prevent this kind of failure. However, low tidal case and medium tidal case the material does not fail, it does not cause a um, significant variation in the fracture also is more or less a kind of ductile maybe somewhat uh, and the few places the secondary cracks are there, but uh, and, uh, not a significant uh, cracks are available there. So, this is uh, important uh, to consider. Now, with uh, this I say thank you uh, for attending this lecture. Mm -hmm.